Hello everyone. This video would focus on the parts and definition of radical expressions. Please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to radical expressions. Please remember that these are the parts of every radical expression. The first part is the radical symbol. The reason why this is called radical expression is because it is an expression that contains the radical symbol. Our A here is called a coefficient. A coefficient is a number multiplied to the radical expression. And the letter N here is called the index. This tells you which root you're looking for. Please remember that if the value of the index is not written in there, it means that that invisible number is 2. We also have a letter C. And this letter C is named as the radicand. A radicand is the value that you are taking the root of. So this expression that we have here is read as A times the nth root of C. Now let's look at some specific illustration on radical expressions. So this expression that we have here is read as 5 times square root of 7 where our 5 is the coefficient, the 2 is the index, and the 7 is the radicand. Now we remember that if the index is 2, we don't have to write it. It becomes invisible, so that we can go ahead and rewrite this as 5 times square root of 7. So these two are the same. The second expression that we have here is read as 4 times cube root of 5, where our 4 is the coefficient, 3 is the index, and 5 is the radicand. In this next example, we read this as the fourth root of 25. If you notice, there is no coefficient. We remember that if there's no coefficient in front of the radical expression, that invisible coefficient is 1. So there's number 1 right there. So we can go ahead and read this as 1 times the fourth root of 25. So that is how we read radical expressions. Now, how do we determine the value of a radical expression? Or how can we rewrite it in a different form? So let's take this first example. So this is read as square root of 36. So if we wanted to know what is the value of square root of 36, we can go ahead and equal this whole expression to x. So this is read as square root of 36 equals x. Now we are going to rewrite this into its equivalent exponential form. This expression or this equation that we have here means that x squared is equal to 36. What is x? So if you notice, our x here becomes the base of the exponential form, while our index of 2, which is invisible, becomes the exponent in the exponential form, and our radicand, which is 36, will become the answer to the exponential expression. What we're trying to do right now is we're supposed to determine a val the value of x such that when we multiply this x by itself twice, it will give us 36. Meaning if we have blank times blank equals 36, and it should be the same number. So then these two numbers would be 6 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. And so we can go ahead and rewrite this as 6 squared equals 36. And so this tells us that our x is 6. So then this square root of 36 then will equal to 6. So that's how we evaluate radical expression. Now let's look at this next example. So this is read as cube root of 64. So that we can evaluate this, we equal this to x, which means that if we change this to exponential form, this will come out x to the power 3 equals 64. Again, notice that the x here becomes the base of the exponential form, while our index of 3 will become the exponent in the exponential form, while our radicand 64 will become the answer to the exponential form. So that we need to figure out a number such that when we multiply it 3 times by itself, 
blank times blank times blank will equal 64. And that number is 4, which means that if we have 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, which means that our x is 4 and then the exponent is 3 and that is equal to 64. Notice that our x then is equal to 4 so that we can go ahead and say that the cube root of 64 is 4. So in general, if we are given the nth root of c, we can equal that to x so that we can change it to its exponential form, x to the power n equals c. Again, our x will become the base in the exponential form, the index n will become the exponent, and the radicand c will become the answer to the exponential form. So these are the parts and definition of radical expressions. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!